you know, a multi-generational <coughs> and by multi-generational I'm talking about it in a very nuanced way and a multicultural um, workforce in place here. Just kind of wanted to throw that out for consideration. Captain Miguel, are there things you're going to add or comment on that? Um, you know, I, I love the, the idea and the point that you make, Linda. I think it's an important one. Because <coughs> you know, just in, in, I'll try to answer my, the question from my perspective. Personal view, and, and you know, I have. Um, I, I guess I, I could be a second generation. First of all, you first generation first, American born. First, yeah. first, first American born, and obviously, throughout my family, I've had second, third generation. And I see a tremendous difference <laughs> in, in, in how they interact with each other, how they interact with their, you know, uncles and aunts. Um, so, to your question in the context, well, how does that impact? Thank <laughs> you. 
expensive because they maybe retain somebody to do it, they end up hiring someone else uh, through another agency, and then they hire the wrong person because they were so busy to fill it because that's the need, they're desperate. The time they start to recruit is the moment that job is, is open. Okay. So, so when they recruit it, it's, it's, it's totally on the wrong side, and I call it the red. And you know, as, 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 as fun as I call it, you know, recruiting needs to be fun. And fun is simple, you got a forecast, and that's getting in front of the curve. You know you hired 20 accountants last year, and the year before you hired 19, and the year before you hired 18. Why aren't you looking for those 18 accountants at the beginning of the year before the job fair? Yeah. And then you gotta understand. That's the, the you of this. So understand is what's the pipeline look like to the degree of who's in the company, what are the skill sets that you're trying to bring in that are different, and the last one is network. So by, by creating recruiting in the funnels, forecast to understand your network, you're able to really get in front of the curve. But the reality of all this, is, as we're talking about this, is the numbers. Uh, I didn't know you'd hire you to work in that, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. At General Mills, the same thing happened, the same thing when I was at Amazon. Um, you're trying to increase your diversity. Here's, a, here's a, the campuses that you're going to. Now you're only looking for the top third already. Now from that top third, now you say, who, who are going to fit my spec? Who wants to move to Minneapolis? <laughs> Who's still Hispanic? Who's still Mark? So now you're talking about two or three candidates at the most that are diverse to fit your, your spec. So the smart companies figure out who those two or three are day one. So when we get involved in the consortium for graduate study and management, you're meeting them before they even go to school. So now I've got a relationship with them for two years before they, they get hired, before they graduate. So I have a better chance of getting them by having an internship with them that year, by staying in contact with them, by flying them to the Black FA or Hispanic FA, and then that's how you increase your, but you've got to start with the numbers. The reality is, at least from the corporate side, when you're recruiting, it's a handful of people. Now, when you're talking about nonprofits, when you're talking about all these, the, the pool gets bigger. But in, you know, I've, been, I've worked for Compaq, for Amico, for Exxon, and General Mills. Big corporations that have pretty high standards of what we do, so I know exactly the numbers. Uh, when we looked at our future pipeline of Hispanics, for example, in General Mills, well, you know, there's not that many Hispanics graduating that fit all the specs that want to move to Minneapolis or want to move to where our plants are. So what do we do? Well, what is PMG doing? Well, PMG owns the University of Puerto Rico, and they want to get out of Puerto Rico, so they'll go anywhere. So that's what we started to do. We started to develop the relationship. Finally got some interns. Now, five years later, now we've got full-time hires, we've got interns, and now we've got a pipeline. So the excuse.